are maybe understood differently um, we will talk so it will be much more of like you tell me what you understood and from that and it, it can be a question so it you can basically raise your hand and then say like okay you know, this i thought i understood but i'm not sure what does you what do you you know what what is this what is that or i've understood this so you explain in your own words what you understood and others will understand as well and then if it is you know correct great i would say that's great you know good understanding and if i feel that you probably missed something then i will add on top of that that way normally it means a proactive discussion or that you won't forget it um, later and and through that also we will explore a much more detail of the challenge document okay so who and uh, know that this is the principle that it's not only for you that you are speaking by by explaining and by asking you are helping others who probably would benefit a lot more for, from your question than you know uh, me speaking so so that means do it for your colleagues you know? so who wants to start either through a question or through saying what they understood I mean, I can call names if that is easier, just random names. So, for example, uh, Mama Mohammed. Do you want to tell us what you understand from the challenge document? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, I, ha I had uh, some difficulty in accessing the, uh, doc uh, the documents, but now I guess I'm able to see it, so I will go through it now. Wonderful. Okay. So okay. just do a quick scan and maybe just prepare a question if you have as well. All right. Okay, wonderful. Great, thanks for speaking. Um, then let's see Elizabeth, Nanjala. I have one to. Yeah, go on, Nanjala. Uh, Elizabeth, sorry. Looking at the different tasks in uh, a rough overview of what expected within the week second analysis. So just trying to break down the task into what can be into chunks. This is what I know I can be able to do right now and what can probably be So I have a rough idea. Or what is expected, the kind of yeah. uh, unfortunately yeah. I, I i somehow it's harder for me to hear uh can you say it slightly louder if that's possible yeah. elizabeth I, I didn't hear properly Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Fantastic. Fantastic. That's very good. That's very clear. Okay. Um, so I think I've gone through the document, uh, just kind of like proofreading and looking at the data that we are set to analyze and some of the tasks. So I've just covered a few of the tasks up to task number two. Um, so far, I'm able to understand roughly the expectation. Yeah, of... so can you, can you tell us what you understood so far? Just uh, right now, the two tasks as well as the business objective. Oh, okay. So the first uh, task is starts from the setup, building the dependencies and all that. And then now from the data is to 
explore the data set to get an understanding to see what's what's their possible relations if there are any relations at all within the data set that have been provided and then um so yeah so the eda i've understood the eda will just be roughly checking out what's inside the data and then now task two about the data science component building um so that's where i am at i think the business objective so far from what i have gone through is to find relationships and then uh, between different features of the data and also to um how do i put this there are some questions that have been asked just to find out quickly or efficiently um some of the key insights that we can draw from the data from different co uh, continents or countries so that's for task number one so i'm still going through task number two um to understand what is really expected but the i like that we have kind of a guideline on what is expected in terms of uh, activities and actions that are expected to be performed uh, on git so that's where i am i'm still going through the document thank you thank you thank you so much elizabeth great i thank you um still of course uh we need more people to elucidate what's probably the business objective and 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 the different tasks as well so but thanks as a bit for for helping us understand a bit more so uh faromika did you did you raise your hand or do you wanna just tell us what your understanding so far is If you are unable to speak because maybe that you are not in a place, you could just also write that I am unable. So just just as a, as a <laughs> code of conduct, you know, we all are here and we all are just, it's more like internships. So at least let's communicate uh, in terms of like if whatever we have, communication is essential. So ensuring, acknowledging that we have heard but we are unable to speak is good. So just uh, let us know. Um, Okay, uh, uh Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Yeah, I, I am muting just in the middle if there are noises, but yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay, go on. Mahvib. Okay, so I think the overall objective is to find uh, which topics are, are more popular uh, among uh, countries, so and uh, yeah, I think mostly among the countries and uh, generally uh another uh objective might be uh, uh the type the type of content i mean how long the content is uh, uh what is its similarity i mean how unique is it and uh, which categories uh, it would be in i think those are the two main uh, objectives And uh, specifically with the, what type of uh, tasks we would be doing is, uh, I think in the first task, we just uh, explore the data, just uh, try to get uh, an overall understanding of it. Then we, after that, we uh, we correlate it with other, with the other data, 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 like where the data was uh, collected from, like the domain, I think. I think, uh, yeah, we correlated with that. And after that, we, uh we focus on learning we focus on versioning our models and uh deploying our uh, models so yeah yeah that's what i've understood yeah that's good 
I think that I'm just highlighting as you speak also where, um, yeah, like which part. And of course, exactly on, on the ML aspects um, we have. Exactly. Good. Okay. And others can ask. I mean, in a way, right now, the general aspects as well. So someone can also go down in detail and say, like, okay, I don't understand by this, like, you know, what should be, you know, the thing. Like, so we try to give you guideline on what's expected. And this way of analysis, whether you do it's a lot more time series as well, and a lot more in many areas that you will you will encounter as well, right? So being able to get you know different tables, like one is for example the global ranking. So this is called data enrichment. So in any company, you would have to maybe the, the data that you have might not be sufficient. Maybe you, you need to collect the weather data, or maybe you need to collect some kind of you know, surveys about moods and market uh, penetration and things like that, and then you need to correlate. And so this is kind of, uh, you know, anywhere you go, being able to do some modeling, some topics uh, from unstructured data, uh, you know, it is very essential. So just, and, and in the process, ask as much as whatever you don't understand. You know. You know, really frame yourself. You are in a company, you just went in. It's your first day. There are so many things you probably don't know. The of course, the team lead has prepared for you, like just what you need to do, the guideline, but it's, you know, that it may not be complete. So it's up to you then to ask and make it complete. Okay. Okay. Thanks uh, for me. And maybe uh, Sumeya. Sumeya, sir. Do you want to tell us or ask question about things that you don't understand or things that you understand? You want to rephrase on your own terms? Smell. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Sumeya, for letting us know. Uh, never you. Maybe you get action. You know, any question or rephrasing what you understood so far and what what you would like also me to explain. Hey, look, uh, I'm out of the right. Yes, you are. Thank you. Um, I just um, look over the document. Um, the first thing I understand from the document is setting up a Python environment uh, to do the tasks for task one. And uh, the second thing I see that to uh, make the GitHub folder structure using uh, the listed starter part Python by it, but I want to make sure that uh, are we going to use uh, for all the uh, the task, uh, I want to make sure that for all the task task one to four, are we going to use this uh, folder structure or should we use yeah. another one? Yes, yes. So it's so basically you should create a good naming. For example, that's a good for example. That's one good question. You know, in principle, the structure it, it is more a suggestion, a suggestion more than uh, okay. anything. But yes, all your code for the week should be in inside inside one repository and within that for example in the notebooks if you have multiple notebooks you can actually put it there and if you have even like you want to categorize the notebooks also by task you can create sub subfolders there inside the, no the notebooks you can say task one folder inside that all the task one notebooks like that so you can create more structure but that you know all the notebooks probably put them in the notebook and many of the sources again there by creating like you know modules, services, things like that if you want, or you know, and then even the overall thing you can have back end and front end um, as well. So, but use the same repos one repository and put put everything. Okay, yeah, that's great. And the next thing uh, uh, I want to ask is. Uh, I see that in the minimal for the task one, the minimization to do, there is a, 
I recommended GitHub repo name, which is news correlation to NAC week zero. Are we gonna this yeah. one or can we again just, uh, again this is much more to make people very much like when they don't know what to do to give them. Okay. But that's okay. why we wrote it really in bold. Really, just this is not a guide, like this is much more only if you really don't know what to do, just you can follow this. Mm -hmm. But if you know what yeah. you're doing, I mean, I think this you should not follow this. I mean, I, I would say create something that that is more suitable for you. Yeah, so these are just uh, guidelines uh, just and has nothing got to do. You don't have to stick with any naming. OK, and uh, not this, I understand that. Uh, we are going to do the crispy dm framework which is preparing the data uh, and uh, to prepare the data underst understanding the data then prepare it for modeling and addition to that uh, doing exploratory data analysis uh, uh, by using uh, uh, some comparable things for their websites and the three data that I have mentioned on the above uh, and addition to this i uh, understand that uh, doing um, statical thinking uh, after the uh, from the visualization, uh, making a report from them in addition to that, and uh, deploy the dashboard by adding a streamlit uh, uh, a streamlit folder, then deploy the dashboards that we have uh, analyzed using EDA, then we'll deploy the those visualizations to access in a dashboard mode into statistics, which is all what I have under, understood from uh, what I have seen in the task one. Thank you. Yeah. Great. I think that's, yeah, that the, those are the tasks and that's good. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to go? One add their insight. So in the middle also, okay, so I can proceed now. Uh, yeah, Alaza. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, the thing I got from the document is uh, the project is mainly classified into three phases the analysis phase, the model building, and more on the deployment phase. Will be. Uh, the third will be Sorry. more on the deployment. The first Absolutely. will be prepare. Uh, what? Absolutely, you're correct. Oh, okay. Uh, then the first will be setting up our environment uh, using GitHub to prepare different uh, .ignore files, branches, repos, and once we are done with that, uh, we'll be using different uh, frameworks to. Uh, there's a document that will that we will be submitting either tomorrow or Thursday, and uh, during that report, I think we'll be, we'll use Crisp DM framework to explain what we'll be doing. Then the second phase, uh, the second phase will be uh, more on the first phase. Uh, we'll complete more analysis by answering different questions, and we'll be using different graphs and uh, statistics to answer different uh, questions. Once that, uh, that's done, uh, the second phase will be more on uh, uh, component uh, model building. And during that model building, will we use different uh, classification, clustering, topic modeling, and uh, different anal uh, predictive analysis. And once we're done with that, uh, will most probably change the data. So uh, we'll store that change data to post the gray squill. Uh, my question here is once we've done the, once we've changed the data and stored it in post the gray squill, will we use that again for the, for that same model or will just uh, store it in the show our diagram? Uh, more, I would say for the dashboard building in a way that that one, you have now the model and the features that goes to the model, right? So now inference time, when you deploy a new, uh, when a new data comes in, of course, both the code is there, like, and the model means already the code, you know, the code plus the data. And, and then the other parts that are, that you probably pull from the Postgres is the feature, the clean features, right? So 
when you do model inference, you might need those data. For example, for clustering, you might need that, that, that part. But more than that, also for dashboard, for visualization, you need uh, those clean data. So the PostgreSQL is well, just uh, the or the database is mostly to store the clean, you know, basically you can think of it the feature store. Oh, okay. Uh, once we finish that, we'll be designing dashboards, either using Streamlit or using React, uh, different uh, backend frameworks like uh, Flask and uh, design our dashboard. And once that's finished, we will docker, uh, we will dockerize our uh, React app in the backend, and once we've dockerized it, we'll deploy it using either Kubernetes or I think it's uh, we can uh, directly use AWS Lambda, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, and uh, once that uh, once that's done, I think the whole week is finished. Yeah, excellent. I think I I like your understanding. Um, because it, it, it's exactly good that you break it down into these three phases. And the three phases, one is, of course, preparation plus data understanding. And also there, you learn more about the CRISP-DM, which is much more of a structured manner for data analysis. Um, it helps you, like, you know, it puts priorities to things, like, for example, business objectives comes there, so that you, you understand what a business objective is and what you're trying to do. And then you, you, you continue in the crisp DM is just a seven step cyclic process. And then you go into the next step, which is data understanding, which is not EDA yet, but it's more to say, can the business be answered by the data? In this case, we have done that for you. So that's fine, but it's, it's good to understand. And that part of data understanding, business understanding and uh, data exploration comes as phase one. So that means you are really analyzing, setting up environment and and all that and the second step is of course like i think that the modeling aspect in the modeling you do all you know all sorts of feature from the analysis you have already clean features and then you use that any model build in you know you establish models and you test models and not only that you do ml ops so which means like you in the ml ops framework you have the experimentation layer so that means during model building you have you have to experiment, right? So you have an experimentation layer, and then there is also a much more like a stable layer. So you can think of it that one, where you are now data, you know, once you fix your model and you wanna deploy it, then it has to go to a certain process where you monitor data and you understand, you know, model drift, data drift and other things. So all that part will belong within the ML ops and model building will be the second step. And then the third step is, of course, deployment um, and, and basically communication. And that part is yes, and putting it, dockerizing it, and things like that. And um, you know, then deploying it into the relevant, what, wherever it is. It, it, it's mostly in, in your local environment for now. But yes, it could be like Lambda, like AWS Lambda or other Lambdas, uh, or just like an instance, a bare metal instance. And you know, if you are dockerizing it, of course, you can. All of this is first, you might not be able to finish, so, which is fine, but you now have a very good understanding the life cycle of things. And as scale goes on, of course, the number of people also involved would go on because like, for every part, there's probably another role. That's good. The first part is data engineering, analytics engineering. Then this, the, the, so that's the first phase that you as I talked about, the analysis aspect. And then this, the second phase, is a lot more ML engineering and data science comes there. So these two fields and areas or expertise will come in in that. And then the, the third phase is, of course, ML engineering, but also AI engineering um, or ML ops engineer, depending on whatever you call it, will come on the deployment and, and infrastructure ops as well. Uh, and DevOps as well comes in on the third phase. So it is much more of to tell you in a small companies, one single person would have to act like all of them in a more structured or medium uh, company probably a few people so you there might not be analytics engineer but only data engineer data scientist or ma uh, machine learning engineer uh, and an infrastructure engineer will be the the two so maybe you know three people will represent these three areas 
and then in a much more bigger companies there will be lots of people involved um, because now there's going to be security engineer stability engineer whatever it's called and and then within the infrastructure there's going to be a lot more within the ma labs there's going to be of course the data scientists who actually experiment the machine learning engineers who are going to deploy and test and and then within the data you have analytics engineer as well as data engineer and as well as infrastructure engineer within the data will be embedded so you can see that you know depending on the size of the company how you do is different and this challenge document it gives you that that perspective so very good understanding Alaza. okay thank you okay great anyone else want to ask or want to add on this understand as i said if i were to speak i might not tell you i might not help you understand as as much so you know like everyone is contributing to that common understanding so yeah uh, Sutota. uh th thank you uh yeah Bubal, for giving me uh, a chance uh, i i do have like a couple of questions my first question is uh are we gonna do this uh the week zero uh training part uh, that which is like the demonstration training part are we going to submit it with, like individually or things must to be done as a group i was uh i wasn't this is uh, actually this is individual all the things yes. need to be done individually right so that, that's as you can imagine it's a lot of work so you have to a lot more depends on you know i think that's why we really acknowledge early this is a lot of work we, you just do the best you can um and it is it's as much you know know that we understand i think there's overwhelm is expected and and so of course just try to really strategize to do as much as you can but without being without being feeling bad and that means just really persist get in the community don't don't really don't take it personal it's a lot of work for one week but we also know with a strategy you can cover much more than without strategy so make sure to plan and you know it's not a deep understanding you don't we don't expect deep understanding it's about you know first is persist and then the second is deal with your emotional reactions because sometimes you are a type of person maybe you want to really do something clean something perfect you you're probably then you you can't hear right it's, and and then how do you deal with that so a lot more of it is that one so just deal with yourself with your ups and downs um and and ensure to do as much as you can and contribute and the community really you realize you know people are like you as well they go through something and and you know so then learning and doing the best within the community is what we are expecting so because job environments can be like that it's it's not about an individual only you do the individual work but somehow how we achieve overall might depend on our community on our support system and and, and many other things so so this is as i said earlier as well this is much more of internship more than you know training uh, as the usual training for skill does that, okay, is that, is that uh, clear so yeah that's clear but like uh whenever uh like uh, if I encountered some problems and some issues, like where should and whom should I ask uh, on my journey, yeah. like all the way through the, the, the training? So, so Not even only if for the week two. Yes, Pardon? so just maybe, sorry sorry to cut you, but even if, uh, because I want to correct myself, if the work is individual, but you're doing it within the community, so that means you have to ask, you can't share quotes, you can, in the community, you can do a lot. It's not like, it's not a class. As a, it's like it's your task you have to do it but you can share pods you can ask in the slack and the tutors are always there and we have a five minutes policy that means whatever you ask it will be answered within five minutes so that means the community is alive and live like more live than probably a normal even uh, in-person settings so it's, the tutors uh, it's on will slack, be there. right yes on slack right on slack yes on slack okay. and then stand-ups as well as tutorials so there's going to be lots of events in a day that you could ask right so the stand-ups in the morning you can ask the slack throughout the day you can ask and then the tutorials i think twice or one time a day you can ask 
Mm, okay, okay, I, thank you. Great, yeah. Is that all your questions, Tota? Yeah, for now, yeah. Okay, great. Alazar? Uh, my question was, can we ask the technical support team for any detailed questions, for example? I tried this algorithm and I had this issue. Am yes. I going the right way or is this yes. a uh, error I can solve uh, that kind of questions? Yes. yes. So it's more like you can think of them, you can go and talk to them in person if it's in office. And anything, like you've tried this, show them. Maybe if you really need even just ask for if you can if you can have a Jimmy call, it's fine. I think this is really work simulation. So that means mm -hmm. all we need we expect is that as long as you are active and proactive, we will match yours. So we have all in all our stake. You know, everybody is here is just to make sure you get the best out of it and that you you're not burning out yourself. Um, but then at the same time, there's your, you know, your questions are making everyone else also improved, right? So ask that questions in Slack, you know, such that others can join. Even your question is really the answer to many people's questions. Too. So it's, yes, you know, you can ask anything without any reserve and the tutors will do the best they can um, to do, like, you know, to support. No, so it's a, an all-in game it's not so it's not we're not asking you just uh you know 10 hours a day and you know 60 hours a week in in max and of course you can do it in 40 hours and and that but we are there just because we we know it's a small amount of time but we believe that you can really get the best out of it in terms of the mental you know what one can achieve when they are all in that's what we want to show and the job environment is usually that you know, in a job, if you are all in, you really succeed and the company will succeed and you will progress and things will become better. And you don't need that many years to do that. So, yes, um, so we are all in and you are all in. So just remember that. Good. Okay. Abel? Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, my question is actually from the data set. Uh, yeah. I think there are three data sets. Are we supposed to choose one data set or since they are related, are we supposed to link them and do a comprehensive analysis? Yeah, so the, the three data are like, of course, we, we share them because they are related and we make it very clear and what is which, you know, what are the data? First and second is in the equation itself, it requires you to merge the different data. For example, when you look at um, just the top, um, so perform media, for example, here, who are the top and uh, bottom 10? So in each of even this data, some the websites that have the largest count of news articles, this one, you know, for to answer this question, you have to look at the news data, right? The the data, you know, that just, you know, the which lists the the URL of the news site and then the, the article. While which websites with the highest numbers of visitor traffic? This one is the traffic data, right? So the site traffic because you can't get that from from this. And which countries with the highest number of news media? Again, this one is probably the either, you know, you can do use from both. And then when you are comparing, uh, especially when you are doing the 2D part, so what is the impact of frequent news reporting and sentiment to the website's global ranking? This one is you have to merge these two. Now you have to merge it maybe by URL, or sometimes by uh, the other, so you have to join those tables. So that means already the answering the question means you have to do sometimes what you know use this or that data or merge them. Is that clear? Okay. Abel, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, excuse yes, me. Uh, yeah. I think you hovered uh, 
around your data tab like all the way yeah can you can you just show us because uh i'm not seeing the similar data sets here on my end so i just want to confirm so you mean, uh, you, i just want to confirm yeah this data i i just got only uh two uh zipped folder which is like uh, a data set okay, so uh, refresh, refresh. copy of data and a copy of raw data which is like two csv file formats uh can you share can you refresh my, my screen you want yeah, no can you refresh your just i think because you you you, you have it you have all so can you refresh your browser just so that if that is the case mm. okay i will give it a try thank you yeah so uh, maybe just because earlier in the stand up i have updated them moved and then put all the data in the data folder and you should be able to see all of them. So check it, and if not, if it's not shared, then we will share it again. But I think it should be. Did you manage to refresh the top? Yeah. Um, am I going to get it uh, on the on Ten X Academy website? Is that? No, 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 just a Google Drive link. So that's a Google Drive link. So if you go to the drive, like the link, then you should be able to. So I'm just going to give you also the link just because you can. I am also sending it here. Yeah. And Sumaya already. Um, yeah, she uh, she shared the link here. Yeah. Nice. So it should be. So I think if if Sumaya see, sees it, you should see it as well. So it's just go to the older drive link and you get all that in. Okay. Any other question? If not, then let me just just so that then I think uh, you know already by the different people who asked questions as well as explained they already explained it but just so that we are all in the same page i will also go through it just again really read this one because this is much more of the overview but uh, it's written in a very small one line the focus is basically of course sentiment topic and report various global media and what it means is a lot more a lot more the business objective is about this, right? So you are trying to really infer what makes a news site rank higher in a global um, context. So you learn a lot of things. After this analysis, you can really say many things about, you know, which countries have the highest number of highly ranked uh, uh, media sites and why, you know, what do they do? What makes them? Is that because they, they post frequently or is that because they have like, you know, are they correlated these different bigger global, you know, high ranked medias? You know, what makes them, what are different? What do they focus about? Is it about sports or, you know, is it about politics? You know, does reporting on politics increase them? You can ask, it's, it's basically that question. You can really write blogs and after blogs, as well as also help many companies understand and even help, you know, other uh, local sites to really just rank higher in their own country as well as also globally, right? So this is understanding how to do that and understanding how reposting a certain topic, who posts very first, for example, who breaks a news first, you can ask that one too. So there's the data we, we created is a lot more to help you that. And of course, in the process the you know, what we are trying to do is of course, you also, we also learn about how you handle earlier, as I said, you know your your kind of readiness it's not just sometimes you might think it's only skill readiness but someone that is basically more skilled sometimes fail with zero because they really can't deal with themselves being overwhelmed and you know, dealing with your emotional state is important you know somebody you may think that somebody is really doing well they know it but you feel like okay then i i am not good but really dealing with this emotion is important because you are good and as long as you you persist and i I can say a lot of you are already qualified. So it's much more what differentiates is persistence and emotional reactions. So you know that mindset is the most important 
And I think the music earlier we play, I think uh, it's uh, the credit goes, of course, to Pascaline. It's very aligned, right? So it's basically the, you know, you can be, you know, you can be anything. You can really be, get the gold or break the new record. Um, and, but a lot more, those, all of that, I think in the, just in the music video already, you see, there's a lot of failure before you achieve your, your full glory. So, um, and that is good. And, and then we designed it such that even if you don't make it in terms of, you know, for many reasons, maybe you just don't want to continue because it's too intensive and you don't have time or this or that, but we designed it such that even working on this challenge is, you can add it on your portfolio. So by the end of it, you still will actually say that I have done this. I have this type of job experience because, you know, even if it's a one week, you're more, we're more asking you kind of like a, like a streamer. Project. So, so you can really say that I have done this, this type of project and experience. So this is a win-win approach. So that means whatever time you spend here, you will use it. It will benefit your, your profile and portfolio. Right. But we also know, and I think we really overemphasize, we also know that it might really overwhelm you. So make sure that, you know, you are strategic to not be overwhelmed. Overwhelmed means, you know, to think everything as one without strategy. So if you put a strategy and deal with it like one by one, you know, okay, if you don't finish, you don't finish, but you have a strategy, you don't get overwhelmed. When you over get overwhelmed, you don't do anything. That's basically everything stops. You don't progress, you don't do anything. So, and that is don't get overwhelmed and the effective medicine or cure for overwhelm is strategy. Make sure to have early strategy, what you want to finish, what you want to focus, you know, very clear. You have a to-do list, you follow and you have it in the weekly things and things that doesn't come, okay, you either skip it or you stay there, but you know, like you have a strategy. So when you do that, you don't get overwhelmed. Persist means knowing and learning that everyone is like you probably they may, they may, of course, be one, you know, slightly more experienced than you, but it's okay. You'll get there, and it's all about dealing with your emotions. It's not personal. It's just, of course, there's gonna be frustrations and things that are normal, but you still, it will not, like, it will not break you down. It will just, you will just persist, irrespective. Um, and so that's those two really make sure. And the data set is, of course, is very. Um, we sourced it from. The global data set, I think this is the, already, whenever we, we give you this kind of data, I think it's actually the, the GDAL, um, there's a, one site that many of the sites actually, it's not just a global news, I think we might be wrong, I might update it. It's actually, we updated it from, we collected it from uh, the, there is one, uh, all the latest, it's a, let me get the link actually. Um, Bam, bam, bam. Just give me. So I'm just gonna put it here as well. So let me share it here. But also here, update it. So the GDL project is so. So that's the, you know, a global aggregator. It's an open source, but really an incredible place for even for in the future, you can, you can, can use it. So unfortunately we didn't update the data, but it's, you can, we can get the news even just for, I think the last, um, so the last one you can get it from yesterday. Um, so that means all up to yesterday or up to some hours ago, you will be able to get the, the, the data, right? So, so you'll be able really, you have, you know, these are terabytes and petabytes of data. Uh, so these are events, any news events or any events in the websites that they are, um, they are here, right? So, and you can actually 
you can collect all that events data. And if you need more information about that, you can read it from, from this, okay? So that is sourced from there and then uh, somehow cleaned a little bit. And so you get a much more clearer um, uh, data. And this is basically the article ID, the source ID, the source name, the author, title, description. So this is basically, you know, when we say the headline, uh, you are, you know, you are actually, of course, uh, uh, more analyzing for topic modeling and stuff, the headline. But the description is also there. The URL, this one, you will use it more to merge with and the, the traffic data because the base URL is what is in that data. And then also for time series analysis, you will know when was the published and content is really the first 200 characters and the content is also another one you can actually analyze. And the category might not be certain thing, but it's the search query used to fetch the data. And the article is basically, of course, the full content and the sentiment is calculated for you as well already there. So you, you, you can use it, but you can also calculate your own sentiment. And so this one is the, the, the main, what we call the news data. And then the domain locations is basically, this is another data that you need because you don't have maybe locations on the domains. And this one gives you like for different domains, uh, the country where the news media headquarters, because a news like BBC can have multiple offices in different countries. So you, you can't know. So this one is really gives you the, basically the headquarter that owns the domain or the website is located when it's available. So sometimes, you know, the, the site, the URL might not be in this data. In that case, it's, you can call it a missing. So that means when you join, it might not be one by, you know, uh, one, um, relations it's, it's, it's one to one relation it might just be there might not be information here whatever here is also might not be there so you know you have to and this is the data and it contains basically the source common name and the location and the country so this gives you a very good kind of understanding by country the geography aspect of it you can plot as well just in in uh, you know your geo, geo maps you can do that as well for, for visualization so you know and then the other one is, of course, what really is important is not only this, the content and stuff, but also you know, the, the, the traffic data. And this one comes again. So this is just the 1 million global website traffic data. I think this may, come, may have come from, um, you can search it, 1 million global website traffic data. It's a known thing. It may, I think we might have downloaded from Kaggle, but there might be other sites that you can get it also. So this is basically just 1 million sites, like the top 1 million, uh, uh sites in the world and their traffic so that's basically most likely it's from either google analytics or something similar right and that has a much more different very useful data including for that domain you know subdomains like you know for example bbc.com you can have like you know dev.bbc.com this on that and so you and then subnets and how many ips are there that 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 it is linking to so, you know, you can see a lot more. There's a lot more understanding and analysis you can do with, you know, when you are combining this thing. So, because the data is large, so we really ask you that in GitHub, don't just push code uh, data, just uh, ensure compliance and data privacy and make sure that, you know, uh, you understand what licensed data license is. At least you read from, you know, GDL and others. So, in the win-win situation, I think that's really, what I earlier said, it's really a win-win situation. So this week is really whatever you do, the, the more you work, the more you benefit yourself and the more also we know about you. And on top of that, really make sure to focus on complete as many tasks, even if it, it means you might not task, you might not do much. So by focusing one, 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 maybe from each category, you might focus, that's a strategy. But choose such that uh, by the end, you are happy as well, right? So when we do something, when we complete something, we are happy. So if you're just spending only completing maybe in all only one area, you might really might not be happy. So make sure, for example, you, you creating a dashboard might help you because then you can share it with the wallet and or you might really just you are a type of machine learning you want to focus because there and so create this and that. So but strategize and try focusing only as completely many tasks as possible, more than trying to really be perfect. I think that, you know, in one week with all these tasks, you can't be perfect. And the, sub, the Ten Academy earlier also asked, we are there to support the tutors, the community managers, 
and everybody is really so don't ask uh, don't hesitate actually any to ask any question um, and you know share resources and basically of course persist and the different topics that will be covered along these topics you know when when you are working and the different tasks you'll be covering these different aspects of uh, topics or skills you know you would be more about talking about python javascript github commands frameworks processes workflows and then you're also just gonna take think and work or learn read about databases data understanding and explorations and the uh, meaning of CICD because we ask you to do this and that sometimes MLOps like how to really just go and set up your machine learning uh, experimentation and, and deployment aspects and then of course different algorithms in the modeling and web app development for you know when, whether you use you know, Streamlit and others just more uh, you will learn about just at least you know how you access them and then full stack development because you might have back end and front end and then the server and serverless deployments you might think even if you don't do you will probably think or you will have tutorial so these are different aspects as you can see it's a lot for one week but you know make sure you don't you will not understand any of them but it, it is we repeat these things in during the actual training in the 12 weeks these things repeat again and again and again so even if you don't understand one time by the third time you will understand what it means why it's relevant and all that so again we you know because we know it because really know that overwhelm is expected and proactivity is a key and persistence is highly valued persistence okay and so we shared some you know just starter code just if you want to use it use it you are not forced to use it it's much more if you don't know where to start this one just gives you one aspect um and so you know follow this just then each of them what it means is explained and and the tasks are of course divided in the three and one is, of course, um, first is you have to set up your environment and do some uh, ED analysis and then uh, learn uh, things. And so in the task one, it just is that aspect, environment setup, as well as ED and stats, uh, statistical understanding. And in each of those sub uh, tasks, you know, we give you what is expected in terms of the key performance indicators are, of course, the setup relevant skill in area demos, for example, in the GitHub that you are you actually know how to use git very well is one uh, you know both your structure um, uh, creating for you know branches as well as also uh, managing your you know merging pull requests and things so this, those are what it means by relevant skill in the area development and then also that your base code or you, you use another um, you know copilot driven things it's fine whatever you use um, that is fine but just you have a dev environment that means you can code any type of code, JavaScript or Python, and you can, you know, you can, it's easier for you to set up and that's all for you, like we don't measure it, but at least you, by writing code and submitting them, we know that you have the dev environment and then the relevant skill in the area, especially in the Git, is your structure and your commits history, your commits structures and branchings and, and many things we will, we will look so that they become key performance indicators. And the project planning in the EDA and the stats, that's basically, yeah, within that, there is you learn a little bit about the framework of CRISPDM, and then the within that you will know this terminologies, data understanding, data exploration, exploratory analysis means something, and the statistical understanding is basically as part of the exploratory data analysis. But because it is an essential element, interpreting in your when you write reports, it's very important to have, you know, to make sure like you know, is it influenced by outliers? Is it, you know, do I have sufficient data? Things like that. That's what statistical thinking is. Is the sample homogeneous? Can I, you know, uh, claim this or that? So that, you know, your limitation understanding, uh, when you write a report, the limitations, the challenge and the samples, whatever you discuss there is, is there. So this is basically uh, the KPIs are there. And basically I will not go through it, but a lot more of it is just we ask you, to do task one, you also need to use almost all the three types of data that we provided, um, and that's it. And the task two, it's a lot more is you know data science and component building. So basically, it means for your modeling aspects, you just do. There are different elements. First is the ML apps components. They are they basically mean you know, feature store. Uh, and experimentation layer and then uh, modeling layer or that means like um, the storing the model 
and and basically model monitoring um, and then with the modeling as well time series analysis as well as also some kind of classification works modeling um, and sometimes means you know like sometimes by manually you do or you can look at category or you can use even llms uh, this phase for that so it's basically and then within that there's topic modeling predictive analysis and network analysis uh, will get there so in the ml engineering it's a subtask of task two so it's much more of you know you look at ml feature store model versioning uh, model monitoring as well as also data versioning so the uh, will be there as well as code versioning, which is Git, and, and then you use the dockerization, building Python projects, that would be the ML engine engineering component. And we give you, of course, the essentials within that, what you could focus, you know? So for, for example, keyword extraction modeling, you can use this kind of algorithms and topic modeling, you can check these references. And for, of course, the events that the news article, you may follow similar mode, some references, we gave you just to follow, okay? And task three is a lot more about dashboards and deployments. Um, so that's there. It's like basically at least SQL is, uh, you know, putting everything in, into the data such that for, for any further analysis that you structure it uh, with the Postgres uh, is, is, is uh, the task three focus. So it's basically just database how do you then now you have so it's actually task three and part of task two is the same so it's like that means the feature store you will use postgres as well as more or less the feature store so in a way it's much more to highlight task three is basically it's divided between you know it's in between task two and task four but it is just to highlight you know that you should use you know the to highlight the importance of that uh, how after analysis you don't have to analyze you can you should be um, loading your your clean data for visualization and many further uh, analysis there and task four is basically just dashboards and you do um, again in there you can use either react or um, you can use uh, streamlit which is very easy to do or other as well as other just dashboarding tools if you also you know tableau and you have access to it or you know power bi and others you can use it as well but just those are the recommended one and i think streamlit is so super simple and easy and you will benefit using it if nothing if you don't uh, build your own i think using streamlit is very recommended because it's easy it doesn't take time but you can do a lot more things so within the stream is because streamlit is just behind it is a react so you can actually expand streamlit with your own components and uh, for deployments you know you can use fast api or um, and a flask or other uh, uh, other tools and the minimum essential to do are there and in the deliverables there are monday basically all you do is just just that your github link nothing more we don't do anything it's just whether you have created a github link or not so you know we don't want to overwhelm you today but just create a github link so that we know that you've started you know the very essential so we don't look anything today it's just that you submit just your GitHub link, right? So even if it's empty, it's fine. Just make sure you have created and then you uh, submit today. And Tuesday is a one page summary of the project as you understand it. So that's basically that help you that you have understood the project well and you rephrased it in your own terms. So that's one. And then the second part is that whatever you have done, so you're still submitting the link, but whatever you have done um, up to tomorrow that you, you Wednesday is the GitHub link, and then Thursday and Saturday. Saturday will be the final one. So we will look into the documentations and your collaboration, your help, your assistance to, you know, the community, your communication and flexibility, um, acknowledging potential challenges in that, for example, in the analysis or in your reporting. That's the aspect. So there will be tutorials all the all the days, so up to Friday from today. And this is the first one that I'm doing, but then there's going to be the later on Python environments and project planning. Tomorrow, there's going to be on data science, component building and topic modeling and sentiment analysis. And then as well as on ML engineering components on the third day, and then working with SQL as well as database data schema design. 
and then of course building dashboards using Streamlit as well as full stack programming with Python and React on Friday. So we will publish two leaderboards, one on Wednesday and one on Sunday end of day. And the references are here to, to help you really just things that we think, references that we think are useful. So, you know, before anything, you could just look some of them as well. It will help you. Okay, so that was a high running, you know, but hopefully it makes everyone in the same page. Any questions? So if there are no questions, we are over time, so I we, you know, we can stop. But during the tutorials later also you can ask. But hopefully this is, you know, it's exciting. It's done, it, it seems a lot, it is a lot of work, but as I said, it's all about being strategized. It's in the face of this, what is really important is that strategies and, and attack. And you really, by Friday, you will be the most excited person because you, it's a lot, but you really, you, you, you find yourself a superhero because you, in one week, you know, when some things are structured, the amount of things you can cover is incredible. And with the community support and stuff, you really realize, you know, okay, Monday and Friday, usually Monday and Saturday, for many people is a very contrasting day. Monday is like, wow, that's too much. I don't think I can do it. And Saturday, like, wow, crazy that I have done that. Like, this is incredible. So those two know that that day will come. I mean, Saturday is not that far. It, it may look from looking at the project, sometimes it might feel it's very far away, but it's just Saturday. In a normal week, Monday to Saturday is actually very, you don't feel it, but in this week, you really feel it. Um, so we're warping time in part. So I think you can start today, Sumia. Just anything you can start, just to strategize and attack. It's, there is no, it's like you know you don't have to start we just gave you a structure so that it can follow if nothing but you can you know once you put a strategy you can work on it today so okay any question one more round and are you all excited happy just show with some you know whatever emoji that is describing your state currently. Excellent. That's good. Thumbs up. And you know, that's good. That's good feeling. Thank you. So yeah, good luck for the week. And it's going to be, we will meet in tutorials and, and standups. Thanks everyone. In Academy team, we can't stop presenting. Uh, recapping, sorry. Thanks.